Thank you for tuning into the podcast. As always, I'm grateful for your interest and your support. When I was 17 years old, I spent the summer working on an Amish farm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I got to spend a lot of time in stables. We had to milk the cows at 5.30 a.m. and again at 5.30 p.m. This chore was followed by more chores, cleanup, shoveling manure, replenishing straw bedding, sweeping, and preparing for the next milking shift. The stable was not the most pleasant place. It smelled in there. There was cow poop everywhere, flies buzzing around. It was crowded, and I always got dirty. In fact, I learned the hard way that one should never stand directly behind a cow because she might cough and move the bowels at the same time. The stable was also a place where calves were born and where sick animals were nursed back to health, but there were others that didn't survive. The stable was full of life, but it was also a messy place. In light of my experience of stables, Luke's story of Jesus being born in a stable and laid in a manger is truly rich. The angel says to the shepherds in the fields, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Now, unless you've actually seen a working farm up close, it's hard to imagine the irony of angels announcing that the Messiah has been born in a place full of animal manure. Let's unpack the symbolism of this gospel story. Every year, we quote-unquote prepare for the birth of Jesus, then celebrate that moment on Christmas Day. Why? Are we supposed to be pretending like Jesus has not been born and this is all happening for the first time? No, I don't think that's the intention. Rather, this season reminds us that God desires to be born in us in a new way. We are each a different person than who we were this time last year. We have grown, we have evolved, we have changed. We're being invited to let God be born into who we are now. And what's more, God wants to be born into our our most vulnerable, least attractive places. Wherever that dung-filled stable is within us, that's where God wants to be. God's not too interested in our perfection, but rather those deeply imperfect places that are in need of transformation and healing. That's where God wants to be born. According to the expectations of the world, the stable is the wrong place for a king to be. The Magi, for example, first go to the quote-unquote king, that is Herod, to find the true king. But they were looking in the wrong place. They expected the king to be high-born in an opulent palace, but that's not God's way. Jesus arrives in the least attractive, least expected of places. So here's the question for us this Advent. Here's a question to hold. Where is the stable in your heart into which God wants to be birthed? Is there an old wound that you haven't faced? Is there perhaps shame or unhealthy guilt to which you are holding? Is there some part of yourself you have rejected that you don't want anyone to see? Perhaps an addiction, an old hurt, lingering anger or resentment. For my students at Ford and Prep, maybe you have a memory of being bullied when you were younger in grade school. Or on the other side of the coin, you didn't treat someone very well and you struggle with self-forgiveness. Maybe for some of us, there are family or generational wounds that you haven't been able to come to terms with on your own. God wants to be born in that vulnerable, wounded, hurting place inside of you. St. Francis of Assisi created the first Christmas creche, and in it he included animals. In fact, Francis had live animals in his Christmas nativity scene. I think he was trying to teach us that God is not born 
in some kind of angelic reality that just floats above everything, but rather in creaturely reality. I think sometimes a misunderstanding of the spiritual life is that the more spiritual we become, the more angelic we have to become, as in almost in some way less human, more perfect, letting go of our body and the fact that we're here in the messy reality of life. But the Gospels teach the opposite. Jesus comes to the places that we have rejected. It says, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. What's that stone in you that in some way you have rejected or would rather reject that's going to be the cornerstone of your transformation? We also might notice the symbolism that Christmas comes at the darkest hour of winter. That's very symbolic, and it's also very real. That's when God breaks through to us with the light of grace in the darkest moments, in the darkest places. God loves to work in paradox. So what's the last place you would really want to invite anyone to see? And are you willing to stay in that place long enough for this impregnation to take place, for God's grace to take root there and be born in you so that this process of transformation and healing can begin to slowly unfold? So let's close with a few focus questions. If you were going to design your Christmas creche in your heart, what is the place where it would be? What's the space where God is drawn from the heavens and wants to incarnate in you? And with that, let's go into a few moments of quiet meditation. 